In this week's video, we're going to cover a precision rifle new barrel break-in. Welcome to Bolt Action Reloading. Welcome back guys. Today's video is going to be covering all about our precision rifle new barrel break-in for our Ruger precision rifle. This is the barrel that the audience picked out for when we talked about replacing the barrel in our Ruger Precision Rifle. This particular barrel is from White Oak Precision. This is the Bartlin Ruger Precision Rifle Barrel. This barrel is chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor, just like our stock one was. However, this is a 26 inch versus 24. Instead of the one and eight twist that came with our factory barrel, we've sped it up just a little bit and went with a one and seven and a half twist. If you were to choose this particular barrel from White Oak Precision with the Bartland Blank, I believe the only option for 6.5 Creedmoor is the 1 and 7 and a half twist, though you're certainly going to find out more from them than you are from me. But that's the barrel that we're going to be going over today and talking about its break-in procedure. In today's video, we're actually going to talk about firing 70 different rounds and that we're going to have data points for all of them today. As you can see on the table, we've got quite a selection that we're talking about today. Um, some consistency among the groups. We're actually locking down the powder and charge. All of our data today was generated with Hodgins H4350. For all of our small rifle primer brass, we were using the CCI 41. And for our large rifle primer brass, we use basically just for break and ammo. We were using the Fed 215M. Now, 41.3 grains was the charge weight we actually used for everything today. I wanted to keep things as consistent as possible, though we're going to get into the exact load data as we move along. I have a video where I covered all the tools that you'll need to change your barrel if you're so interested, but our go and no-go gauges came from Forrester, and they've worked pretty well. After we've got our new barrel put on and head spaced correctly, the first thing we actually did was clean the barrel. The procedure we followed today was very similar to what Tabrannosaurus Rex recommends. For the cleaning that we're talking about today, I was only using Hoppies number nine. If you have another procedure, by all means, follow your own. But if you're interested to see how our new barrel performed, by all means, stick around. We're gonna cover a whole lot of data today, and I think a lot of it is pretty interesting. We actually started off by cleaning the barrel, firing one round, cleaning again, firing another round, cleaning again. Then we shot a three shot group. Now from there, we cleaned every five rounds. The load we were using for breaking is basically what I refer to frequently on the channel as my standard load. It's 41.3 grains of H4350 in Hornady Brass. The Fed 215M was the primer that we were using. The cartridge overall length for those is about 2.858 inches. And to be perfectly honest, that is into the rifling in our new barrel. But again, we're going to get to all those details if you stick around. Realizing that's our standard load, we just wanted something we were familiar with. This particular load in our 24 inch Ruger Precision Rifle stock barrel was giving us somewhere around 2640 feet per second, give or take. Today's velocity should give you an idea how the extra barrel length as well as having our fresh barrel installed is picking up our velocity. I'll put our velocity chart on the screen and you can see our first shot through the barrel was 2681 feet per second. Again, that was at, right after cleaning. You'll notice in the chart, the more rounds we shoot, it tends to get faster. The low dip shots were where we've actually cleaned and then we'll see again the velocity pick up again. Shots one, two, and three were both directly after a clean. Along with firing and cleaning and breaking these in, we were also resighting in our scope. The first two shots got us kind of on target, and then shots three, four, and five were the first group that we shot with our new barrel. A three shot group, which nobody probably likes, but even considering the one wet shot, a .573 MOA group was what we achieved, so certainly can't complain about that right out of the gate. We cleaned one more time, we, again our low velocity of 2713, and then we jumped up for the next four shots. Out of those five shots, we actually had a .565 MOA group, can't complain about that. Our standard deviation on those was only 12.8, but again that first shot really did hurt our extreme spread. If we removed the first shot, our extreme spread on the last four was only 14 feet per second. We cleaned one more time. And our first shot was again low at 2708 feet per second. And that five shot group went into 0.539 MOA. And again, if we remove the first shot, which was our lowest velocity, that's going to bring our extreme spread to 13 feet per second. Our last five shot group was actually shot without cleaning. So this is the first five, legitimate five shot group we've shot. And somehow 0.841 MOA is what we ended up with. Our statistics improved. Our average velocity jumped to 2748 with a standard deviation of 9.6. If we remove the data points that were shot right after the barrel was cleaned, our actual average over all the rest of the shots was 2735 feet per second. The standard deviation was 7.7 .7 and extreme spread of 24. That velocity is almost 100 feet per second hotter than our last. Getting that extra velocity and really not seeing any extra pressure signs, I'll put this brass on the screen so you guys can take a look at it. Really no pressure signs to be concerned with on that. 
even though our projectiles were into the lands a little bit, didn't see anything that scared us. And I'm going to add this rifle to the list of 6.5 Creedmoors that tend to like that particular load. Moving on for the rest of today's testing, we shot 10 shot groups of everything else. Basically, brand new Lapua brass is what we're using. We're, during the rest of today's test, we're fire forming 50 pieces of Lapua brass, all 41.3 grains of H4350. CCI 41s was the primers that we're using. The five projectiles that we're using besides those is the 142 grain Sierra Match King, the 150 grain Sierra Match King, the 147 ELDM, the 143 grain ELDX, and another brand new projectile that we haven't tested before on the channel, this 145 grain match burner by Barnes. For the cartridge overall length for all 50 of these rounds, we're very close to 2.820 inches. For the match burners, we actually were out an extra five thousandths. Today, we're just going to talk about them the way we shot them. So we're going to start off with the 142 grain Sierra Match King. We cleaned before our first shot again, and despite that, we still had a 0.453 MOA group. Our first shot did have a low velocity of 2683 feet per second. However, that five shot group averaged 2716. The distance to the lands is actually just about 10 thousandths off the land, so real close to the lands, which was where we found good groups before. If we go to our second group, four of the five shots went at a 0.241 MOA, and I pulled one shot to actually to open that group up to 0.713 MOA. Averaging just the last five shots, the average velocity was 2694 feet per second with a standard deviation of 4.1 and an extreme spread of 10. So right out of the gate, had a pretty good load that I can't complain about. Our next projectile up is 150 grain Sierra Match Kings. And this particular projectile is one of the reasons why we wanted to go one and seven and a half twist. Uh, look at the package on the 150s. You will see that they recommend a one and seven and a half twister faster. When we originally shot this projectile in our factory barrel, we actually didn't get good stabilization. In our 2.820 inch cartridge overall length, we were about 140 thousandths off the lands, so a pretty darn good distance. Four of the five shots went basically into 0.6 MOA, but the five shot group was 1.816 MOA. However, the second five shots went into 0.930 MOA. Still not a spectacular group, but again, 140 thousandths off the lands is a pretty good distance. And keep in mind, guys, these are just the same thing. We really have done no tuning on these loads whatsoever. Brand new barrel. We really are trying to get an idea right out of the gate to find out which projectiles that this particular barrel might like. Averaging all 10 of those shots, our average velocity was 2667 feet per second. Standard deviation of only 5.8 with an extreme spread of 20. Our next projectile is 147 grain ELDM by Hornady, part number 26333. This is one of the projectiles that our other barrel favored pretty well. So we had high hopes and certainly some in stock. At our 2.820 inch cartridge overall length, we're about 53 thousandths off the lands. Our first five shot group was in a 0.909 MOA, and our second group was 0.542 MOA. All 10 of these rounds yielded an average velocity of 2662 feet per second, with a standard deviation of 13.5. With our average velocity at 2662, one of our rounds actually was at 2691 feet per second, which was the one round that really brought our extreme spread up. Moving on to the 143 grain ELDX by Hornady, part number 2635. I got a lot of recommendations for this projectile from other people, but it never really shot very well for me. So New Barrel had high hopes for it. And at 55 thousandths off the lands, our first group went into 1.125 MOA and our second five shot group went into 1.253 MOA. Groups not being spectacular, statistics were pretty good. Our average velocity was 2694 feet per second. A standard deviation of 4.7 with extreme spread of only 14. Hopefully tuning our distance to the lands can improve our group size on this particular projectile. Moving on to our 145 grains Barnes match burner. At 120 thousandths off the lands, our first group went at a 0.904 MOA and our second group went at a 1.217 MOA. Group's not spectacular, however, 2698 feet per second was a velocity that we achieved. Our standard deviation was only 10.4 with an extreme spread of 32. But we have plenty of these left to test, so we'll certainly do some testing in our new barrel and see how these guys end up working out. So with 70 rounds down our barrel, the 140 grain ELDs are showing good promise, as well as the 142 grain Sierra Match Kings. You know, one of those groups, four shots basically in one hole with one little flyer. If you guys were specifically interested in this barrel, I have done measurements with all my projectiles for distance to the lands, and I will put a chart up so you guys can check that out. Um, it's a relatively large list. This is basically every 6.5 millimeter projectile that I have in stock. 
Assuming you're using the PMAG that actually came with the rifle, there are several of these projectiles you're going to be able to get pretty darn close to the lands, if not into the lands, without any trouble at all. For some of the lighter weight projectiles that we haven't tested yet, you're certainly not going to want those so far out of the case. If your favorite projectile is not on the list, I apologize, but I think there's almost 30 projectiles on this list, so it should give you an idea about what the cartridge overall length to touch the lands is. The longest projectile to the lands seems to be on our table today, the 150 grain Sierra Match King. To the lands is somewhere very close to 2.964 inches. The fairly repeatable CBTO on that I was getting was about 2.246 inches. On the complete opposite end of the spectrum, the closest distance to the lands was 2.736 inches with the Hornady 100 grain ELDM, part number 26100. But again, not a whole lot of projectile left in the case if you had it out at that distance. I'm sure you guys can see a little bit of the reason why we went for a two inch longer barrel this time, just to pick up that little bit of extra velocity, a little bit faster twist weight to really help stabilize some of these heavier projectiles. But right out of the gate with a couple of these projectiles, I've been pretty impressed with what they've been able to do. If you guys are interested in the 6.5 Creedmoor testing we do here on the channel, I'll put a card up. You guys can check out the playlist on that. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so you get notified when I post next week's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you come back next week. And until then, stay safe in small groups.